just you get to choose. Right? Like here's here's the scenario: the, the environment gives us something which can be perceived as negative, can be perceived as not working, can be perceived as problematic. The world's ending. So we get to choose to see it like that, or we get to see choose to see it as an opportunity. So clearly, that it's my responsibility now to do that for other people. If I have information, and you know, other people's success is my success, and vice versa. Because you know what, like the challenges or the roadblocks are the journey themselves. There's no big things. It's all little things compounding on top of each other. Making history yet again on True Seekers, we introduce a two-part episode. Today will be part one, and we talk about the coaching process. A bunch of little nuggets and gems hidden in this episode as we dig deeper into the process of coaching. Keep an eye out for, or listen for, the frame up front and see if you can pick out when we hit those that frame throughout the episode. All this and much, much more on this week's special edition episode of True Seekers. Enjoy. We welcome you to another episode of True Seekers with Coach Nick Davies and myself, Coach Josh Greco. Coach, what might we want to accomplish? How do we want to feel by the time we walk away? What do we want to do on our on our episode today? I would like to know more about Coach Josh's approach process uh, from potential conversation introduction with someone all the way through to when they're celebrating and you're celebrating the start of a coaching relationship. Mm, love it. Okay. And what I might like to get out of our conversation is uh, having a clear understanding or walk away with some distinctions on how I can improve my process. So with that, let's dive in. All right. Well, hit me. It's been, it's been a lot on my mind lately, working with a lot of newer coaches coming in and talking about processes, right? There's, there's no there's no wrong or right per se of how you do it. You know, the only clear distinction is always that everything's about relationship. We have to start from that place, right? We know what we do adds a ton of value. Uh, and the only, the only difference is, is that person or that team do you have resonance with? You know, do you want to work with that person? Are they open? Um, but so I'd like to just hear your process and then we can go where we need to go with it. Yeah, you kind of took the words out of my mouth with uh, what my goal is on, on the first initial connection is uh, I'd say it's twofold. It's listening and making sure that person feels heard. Uh, I have no idea what their reference points are to their communication styles or uh, some of the relationships that they may or may not have. Uh, so I, I try to be a good listener and I ask a lot of questions or uh, ask if I if I got that right or if I heard that right. Um, I had a second answer too. What was your question again? <laughs> oh, and the second part is adding value, just being being helpful in some way to either shine some light on something or maybe it's even in the form of a question, uh, a key question to get them thinking about something that, you know, from my perspective, I might want to try to understand better, if that makes sense. So twofold, mm-hmm. add value, but like be a good listener and, and show that there is value in, in being heard. So let me see if I got that right. So the first connection is being a good listener, meaning that making sure that that person's feeling heard. You don't know anything about them. You want to just give them opportunity to by active listening and then adding some value. Um, did I get that right? Yes. Can you tell me more about the adding value part? Yeah. So that comes with understanding that person's story. What what is it they want to accomplish? Uh, what are they set out to do? Is there a lack of vision, right? Is there maybe not that understanding? Uh, is that something that would even be helpful to them? You know, sometimes I ask these questions and uh, there's no interest there. So it's really pinpointing, well, what is it that's that's missing or or could be clearer for you on your journey and achievement? You know, coaching is, is reserved for, I think we have this agreement, for people who are achievers and want more. They, they know that there's more out there and that, maybe they're their own worst enemies or another perspective would help gain clarity on something they're not uh, converting on as quickly as they possibly could. I love the way you said that. Specifically, I like the way you said coaching is is reserved for successful people that want to be more successful. And that's worth clarifying as well, because it's not saying that you shouldn't have a coach or you won't be allowed to have a coach uh, 
if that if you, if that's not the case. But the point is, if you consider to that to be the case, then that's the case. So that is just it's offering that person uh, the open open arms to say, are you are you willing to take things to the next level? And that's what they want. that's that's the reserve part. It's not like oh you have a special sticker on your you know like on your whatever to say that you you're allowed to come in or not. So right. Define that. Okay. So that's that's the adding value, understanding where they are in their story, what's missing, what might be be clearer, where they want to go, what clarity can we can add. Okay. All right. What's next? Uh, so it, it depends, right? It depends where the conversation goes. One hundred percent scripted, one hundred percent flexible. It could go in a completely different direction than than I could even uh, uh, imagine. But the goal before the end of the Zoom is to establish a reason or uh, value that could be gained from scheduling more time together. And sometimes that comes in the form of progress. You know, what might you want to accomplish before our next time together? Or if we do schedule more more time what would be useful enough for you to speak about or, or for us to talk about and just getting clarity on that, on that progress. Cause that's really what success is. Is it not? You know, that's, I've shared before that that's probably my favorite de definition of success is the progressive uh, realization of a worthy goal or ideal. So we're always in pursuit of something. So getting really clear on those steps, that's what got me interested in coaching in the very beginning for myself and progressing uh, myself is is gaining clarity with that. I always knew that there was more and liked achieving things and thought that I was gaining ground and maybe I was. But one of the principles I've really learned to embrace is the more specific I can be, first of all, the more guarantee I know that I will do that thing. But secondly, it's also a step for more success to happen after that. So the more clear you can be about that progress, uh, the more that you lock it in. Yeah. Isn't it? It's almost like a bizarre thing, right? It's like you, success is, is a progressive realization to where the ideal will go. And we all want to go towards that. But usually the thing that prevents it is not knowing what it is. <laughs> it's just so bizarre. It's just, it's like it's so bizarre. Okay. So it's, it's understanding after that, like, but as you get to the end of the call, what is there a next call? And if so, why is there a next call? Yes. And having that person define that. And that yeah. in itself is hugely valuable because they're picking out something that they can use to get clarity to move forward. And it and it offers you evidence that that person is committed to making changes and they are the type of person that that is going to allow them to step into that coaching is reserved for space. Bingo. It's It's more of a... It's less pull from me, right? But it's also more rewarding for that person to, to pick out what the, the type of success that they want. I'm not here to, to share what, what I think you being su successful looks like, but I'm here to help you clarify what that definition would be for yourself. Yeah, love that. And, and all the same while, it's, it's all adding value because it's allowing them to go on their journey and moving them forward and getting more clarity. Okay, so then next course booked, what, what does that look like after that? Yeah, so, and this is something I'm, I'm very, uh, I pay a lot of attention to on the first call. Uh, so this is a theme for me, is laying out the agenda up front, you know, being respectful of the time. This is more to that listening part of, you know, I have us on the calendar for this, from this time to this time. Is that still, is that still acceptable to you? Does that still work? Um, it, I would like to share what I might want to accomplish, but what, what would you like to accomplish together in our time today? It's more of that commitment, right? That we know that we're going to make progress in some way, shape, or form, and we can pick and choose whatever that might might be. So just the, the power of questions, right? So zeroing in on what progress or value looks like on that next uh, 30 minutes would look like. Okay, awesome. And, uh, and so let's play this a bit deeper because I think that's, we want to get to some of the, the small little two millimeter shifts here. So that the second call we're coming back on and we're talking about Building some rapport, first of all, recapping a little bit what we worked on last time uh, and asking what they want to get out of that call that, that day. And then maybe even sharing uh, what you want to get out of it and asking if that's okay. Is, is, there a, is there specificity around your outcome based on this process or is it flexible enough that it's 
let's see and that's that's all you need and then you're constantly evaluating going through to see like do you need to push it a bit harder do you need to back off a little bit where where's the do i need to go sideways do i need to go left and right that's the same as sideways so i don't to go up and down to <laughs> provide more value here like how does that sit in with you yeah a great question so uh, I'd say it's scripted and flexible, mixed mixed with both. The scripted part comes with paying homage to whatever we set up initially. Uh, to you know, I reverse the roles, right? So if I were to be given an assignment or commit to something that I want to accomplish, I think it's a, a sign of respect uh, to start out with that, you know, because that might not be the most important thing that we end up talking about. But if if I took a step in that in that time period where we weren't connecting, I think it's a uh, I feel honored by ha ha having been asked about my progress with that thing. So that's usually the thing that I want to get out of the, the connection is how, how well did you take your steps that you were committed to? First of all, that holds the standard for what this is about. We know that we can identify what that progress looks like, but doing it is a whole separate thing. And then two, like I said, it's that respect thing. It's paying homage to what was important to them a week ago or whenever we previously connected and setting that frame that we're going to do that moving forward as well. Yeah, I think that's such an important point, right? Because you're laying out that time to say, we're going to do this again, essentially, but let's just check on where we were. And I'm going to honor you enough that that I'm not going to let it cut, let it go, right? Like it's, I'm not, I'm not doing you any favors to be kind, like kind, like to be kind. There's a Brené Brown saying on that, uh, which is really good. Uh, something like, kind, to be kind, it's not to let people off the hook. And letting people off the hook is not kind. So like, part of being kind is making sure that you do follow through and hold that standard. So okay, I'm with you so far, coach. So you Yeah, so, and, and quick note about that, because I think this is very important as well, while, while you look that up, uh, that success you know, we might just feel like we're running through the motions when we talk about, when we show up and we've done the things that we committed to. It's so important to highlight those things because unless we set that intention the previous week, we wouldn't have done that thing. And success can start to feel normal. And like, well, you know, maybe I would have achieved this without coaching. And that might be true too, but it's, it's that intentionality behind what we're accomplishing together that, like I mentioned, guarantees that we'll focus on that thing and that we can make more progress and build upon that in future weeks. So I think that's a key distinction to make. Like it can just feel, well, yeah, I said I was going to do this and I did it. Okay, well, it took a lot during, our, it took almost 30 minutes in our first conversation to land at that point to what we were committing to, to our next time. And that, that's a big deal. It's, it's monumental. I had a client say today in the first team session I had with a, uh, a client, four, four or five people in this team. And uh, it, was the, it was the second weekend. So after we set the standard, after we set that stage. Um, and it, to be reminded, like, hey, I'll, like, what's been great? Give us something that's been great this week. Point to a win, and tell us what your assignment was that you took away, and what did you get out of it? And one of the ladies said, "Are oh, you actually want me to share what we actually did?" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but 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 it's funny because it, it it's it's almost like as an adult we we make these assumptions that the the things are happening, and we don't want to spend the time for whatever reason, but that's where the value is. It's, it's pointing out the things we don't normally point out. Mm. Um, and so that quote is, clear is kind, unclear is unkind. Mm. Isn't that good? I love that. Yeah. So you, we want to be we want to be clear. And we let people off the hook sometimes because we don't want to put them on the spot. But that's unclear, unkind. Very interesting. Yeah. And so to that point, you'll notice who resonates with that too, right? So uh, a lot of times I'll ask at a later time, you know, how did you receive that? Is that, is that how you like to be coached? You know, if, if somebody is, is running through the motions and I pause them and call time out and put them on the spot, some people might not resonate with that, right? So that's where you're, it's almost that, like you're asking for forgiveness later, but you're also learning how that person likes to be coached. Yeah. Some people say, no, that was perfect. Like, just call me out in the future like that again. Other people will say, you know, I, I actually don't prefer that. Like, pull me aside, um, you know, between calls or something like that, and, and we'll get a lift that way. Yeah, 100%. All right, so we're honoring what's 
being already said, we're holding a standard. We, we're, we're showing what this is going to be like. We're asking them what they want to get to. And then is there an outcome um, that you're thinking of as well as you're sharing with them what you want to get to out of that call? Or is it then just a case of see where we go? It's essentially just a coaching call at that point. Yeah, so there's some frame to be done around like why we're here and what would be useful enough to keep showing up. Like if we do this consistently, what, what might that power be? And that's where, you know, I, I make sure that I'm, we're co-creating or collaborating on uh, an ideal vision of the future that feels big and powerful. That's been probably the number one thing as a coach that I've learned to make sure excites a prospect or somebody thinking about coaching. Like, cause that, that's, what's going to get them to come back. That's what's going to like coaching should be exciting. It shouldn't feel like, you know, this is an appointment that I have to show up for. This is the time I look forward to every, every part of my week because I get to, to work on and talk about what's most important to me. That's, uh, I often ask you coach, like, like how's your day been or what, what have you cranked on and you know, who have you worked with? And oftentimes if you'll speak to someone who's, who could potentially, they could be potentially a good fit for you. You'll say things like, yeah, I got really excited about something. So I guess that's what you're referring to when you say that, which is cool. <laughs> yeah, like create, create a powerful future, create a compelling future. It's like you don't want to get out of bed without one of those things. <laughs> 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 All right, cool. And then so then what's next? Yeah, so this is where I, I tend to get a little creative with uh, playing devil's advocate, as you might say, or like I almost assume that – not assume that's not the right word, but I, I test them in a way that I, I want to make sure that they want this, that this is something that they're committed to. How do we know in week number four that you're showing up to the Zoom? Week number seven. Like, sure, this is exciting now, but what's the draw long term? How do we know that this is important enough to work on every time that we connect? And that usually gets some thinking, right? But that's that's the the shit or get off the pot for lack of a better term, right? It's, it's you're on the fence one way or the other. We want commitment, 100% commitment. There's no gray area here. Mm. Any, any sort of gray area is, is going to kill the relationship. It's just a matter of time. Uh, I'll give you an example. I, ha I have a client who's thinking of uh, lessening the cadence to every other week. And I just, I said, I I'm not gonna do that. The last three people I've done that for, they eventually, it's been like a weaning off process and they quit, they stop coaching. There's just not enough lift to do it every other week because yeah. it's like letting yourself off the hook for two weeks in a row until you meet next. Yeah. So yeah. first of all, it's the, it's the repetition. That's just more proof that the repetition is, is what the value is. There's the value is mixed in with the repetition, but it's also making sure that this is something I want. I want this so that, and I, I recognize that the coaching will get me there more quickly than if I didn't, if I didn't invest in it. It's such a such a balance, right, coach? And yeah, it's it's all about it's 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 you find out if they're committed by literally asking. You know, I, I only work with committed people because that ain't no fun for anyone if they're not. But but it's so it's been very clear about that front. But it, it's also offering them an opportunity to really ask themselves because most of the time people aren't committed because they haven't asked themselves whether they are or not, and the default. <laughs> Commitment is not, you're not defaultedly committed to something. You have to opt into that shit. Right? Like you can't, yeah. oh, 100% committed to that. Oh, I didn't even know that. It's like, you're not, if you're not, if you don't, you're not very intentional about your commitment, then you're not committed. But I think it's having that ability to be able to share that and that mirror with someone so that they can see that is really powerful because most people aren't looking for that. They're not aware that it's there. No. Yeah, it's huge. Your default is not to be committed. We don't. We don't ask ourselves, "Are we committed to it?" I think that's uh, that's that's genius right there because that's maybe blind spot is not the word, but that's that's the value of having another perspective, right? Somebody else to to hold up that mirror to you. This is what I'm seeing. Is this is this what you want? Is this is this right here? It's like no, it's not. I want that right there, and I am committed to that. Okay, show me. How are you going to be committed? And all of a sudden, you're off and running. 
<laughs> well, I mean, it's like it's a, a slight side sidebar, but like it's it's when a client tells you they're committed on a specific action, small or not, it's a must. We're going to get our musts. Are you sure? How do you know you're sure? What might prevent you from getting there? How do we mitigate against those things? Are you really clear about it? How much of a must is it to you now? I'm all in 100%. They come back next week. Most of the time they'll do it if you get that far. Sometimes they don't. And then when you when they don't, that's more valuable than when they do. Because mm. then you got like, see, think how committed you thought you were. You won. How do we know? You didn't do it. Didn't do it. As someone today wanted to look at their client list. It's really important for me to look at my client list. I've had a couple of things lately where I've had clients that have got sick, whatever, they're, they're old and they're, like, uh, I didn't know where they were. And I, I want to make sure that I'm on top of all my clients. I need to build a process. I need to get out there. Like I'm, I'm committed to doing it. Let's go. Where do you want to be by, uh, by 4th of July weekend? I want to have top 100 done. Okay. I'm going to really try and do this. Uh, now, there's, I've got a lot of stuff going on. I'm not playing as much golf as I want to. We just bought the house in Florida and the markets, but I'm going to really try. Like, as a coach, your coach's spidey sense is going do lally by that point. Right? <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> they're not going to do it. They're not doing it. It's not a must. And if it's not a must when they're, just, when they're initially excited about it, it ain't going to be a must at 7 o'clock in the morning when you're having no coffee yet. <laughs> yeah and there's a little resistance or something comes up that uh, is is more fun right or easily distracting mm -hmm. huge coach all right so i think i've got a good idea about where you are in your process up to that second call um i'd like to keep keep going with this i think it's going to be valuable for us to kind of move all the way through this and jump off in our next super special edition of coach's corner what do you think yeah absolutely so wait are we are we putting a bookmark here or we're or we still going yep bookmark Mark. Okay. Yeah. So let's, uh, let's set some intention for our next conversation. So how do we bridge what we've covered today and uh, guarantee that we can pick up where we left off here? Yeah, absolutely. So for me, it's very clear that we're, we're at the, the back end of your second call, as you expect a process might go. Uh, and so re really let's kick off with a quick recap on our, our next time for the super special coaches corner. And follow that process through to its logical conclusion knowing that 100 script times are flexible but where would you expect it to go in your experience i'd like to get to that and uh jump off on that but also i'd like to know like what you took away from it, it was really really cool for me to hear that and get some specificity and and, and just some cool reminders around just keep just digging into that compelling future is so important and digging in and digging in digging in that, that's something that um, was a great reminder of, so I appreciate that. But what what was your biggest takeaway? Yeah, so I entered wanting a clear vision of my process. I think the clear vision that I have at this point with our back and forth and engagement is, uh, first of all, the reinforcement of the value of setting it, setting the intention for it, but also the reinforcement of it when it happens. I think that's something I can I can... Because that's the obvious part, right? That we found almost most valuable is like yeah. let's call out the obvious. So I think I could do an even better job of doing that, of confirming the value. Is this what you see? What, what was most valuable to you? And slowing down and making sure that that's driven home. Because without that, we, we have nothing. Yeah, I, I, it's so true. I did this this morning, right? And I just shared it with a client who was was talking about a presentation that he did last week, and you know he was. It went really well. It's like, well, what went more about it? What were you specifically proud of? What, what, it went great, but what would you do even better next time? What type of feedback did you get? Um, was it usable feedback? And, and all of those types of things is just adding layers of, of distinctions that we can just, that are so reusable. And, add, and like, we're not, we're not looking for 180 degree shifts here. We're looking for one degree shifts. Mm two millimeter shifts, like small things that make all the difference. Just having that, like you've got this, uh, let's say you've got a, a safe, right? And you've got like got the combination numbers and you've got like 20 of the numbers, you need one more. It's like, it's just that one more click oftentimes that makes a difference, like in or out, safe opens, breakthrough happens. Layers of distinction, I love that. One, one to two degree, to, one to two degree 
uh, layers of distinction. I love that. Not, not 180. Coach, good place to leave it. Bookmark. We'll see you next time for part two of this uh, excellent discussion. Thank you. Good discussion. Thank you for watching another episode of True Seekers. We appreciate your interaction. So please comment, like, subscribe to YouTube, Apple Podcasts or Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you want more, check out some of our links. Thanks to our masterclass, The Achievers Mindset. And come join our LinkedIn group. And what do you want to see more of? Remember, we're here to share the simple secrets of successful. So help us do that. What do you want to see? What do you want to see more of? Thanks. See you again next time.